Kyle had taken it home. Got the inside of the holster good and wet. Played with it in and out to see if it would work. Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm Todd with Blue Trail Range, and today we are going to be talking about holsters. Uh, mainly for the Glock 19, because that's what I had on me today. So as always, there is no magazine. It is clear, as we all can see. But the slide is going to be forward, just because we are talking about some different types of holsters. And uh, just show you some of the uh, holsters that I have. And mainly, we just uh, had gotten a holster in. We tried it out, and uh, I'll extensively be covering that one. And the other ones, uh, we'll go over really quickly. So get into the to the holsters. So when I purchased the Glock 19, it was pretty straightforward when it came to a holster. I just wanted a, uh, I want it out of the waistband. You can do it in the waistband, but I want it out of the waistband. I prefer that. So the only holster that I could find at the time was just like this. Relatively inexpensive uh, black Kydex holster. We sell these. It's good for what it is. I used it for many years. It's got nice, good, positive retention. Goes in, gets tight, and then it clicks in. Glock doesn't go anywhere. Now, when you do pull this out, this really does tug on your belt. The uh, the way it's retained on the belt is with, it's got a complete loop, so you have to feed your belt through the whole thing. So if for some reason I was going somewhere and I had to leave this at home or at the safe here at work doing whatever it is, then I had an empty holster. And, you know, I don't want to just carry around an empty holster. So in order to get this holster off, I had to remove my belt, take it all out, and put the belt back in, and all that good stuff. It, that's not bad. It's just, it's a real pain in the butt. It's really time-consuming. All right? And as you can see, normally it's not that bad. But two broken fingers. Okay. So we got that one done. Then, you guys remember, a couple months ago or so, I was sent this Kydex holster, the American flag one. And I do like this one. I was wearing this one for forever, many months. Um, it's got good retention, Glocks in there, it's not coming out. One thing I did like about this is the way the loops were, I could pull them out and I can lock this over the belt. And if I needed to get it off, I just had to reach underneath the belt, pull up or pull back on these and lift it off my belt. It was a little easier, especially if I was going into a class to teach and I wanted to take this off. I just kept the firearm in the holster and I was able to remove the entire holster off my belt and put it in the safe and lock it up. Unlike the first one where it's open on the bottom, this one happens to be completely closed on the bottom. And of course, getting the Glock out was, I should say, is a lot easier. Uh, the day I broke these fingers, I was actually wearing this holster. I chewed up the bottom all down. That that upset me, not breaking the fingers, but scratching the uh, holster. Yeah, that really upset me. Fast forward. Kyle, our general manager, had uh, talked to a company, and uh, they're called Craft Holsters, and they had sent a leather holster. Now, I'm a big fan of Kydex because it's hard plastic, and it really holds its form unless you, you know, get it really heated up. And the only way that would happen is, I don't know, maybe you're on fire or something. But they sent us this to, to try out. And uh, Kyle and I both own Glock 19s. So since my hand was kind of out of commission, he decided to take this home and try it out. And that lasted a couple of days before he brought it back in. It was like, here, kind of let me play with it. The reason being is the little slits here for the belt, none of his belts would really fit through it. I, on the other hand, wear a web belt for the most part, so I had no problem sliding my belt itself straight through these. Because it's leather, you could manipulate it and open it up more to get your belt through it. All of the belts that I had did fit through it. Kyle, however, is retired law enforcement, so his belts tend to be a little thicker. Um, this one right here is coming from, it was just because it was a manufacturer and where we got it from. We got this from a company called Craft Holster. Uh, I personally usually am not a fan of leather holsters just because as time goes on, these do soften and there's a tendency for the leather to fold in and inadvertently go up into 
the trigger. This one, however, is relatively stiff and seems to uh, be a pretty good fit. So when we first got it and we had noticed right off the bat that it was a little too tight to fit the Glock 19 in it. So we did a little research on Craft Holster's website and in fact you have to break it in and they give you uh, three ways that it can be done. We opted for the wet approach. Now when we got this we also got the, um, I was going to call it the juice, whatever uh, chemical it is that they recommend you put inside the holster to soften the leather to open it up and form it to your Glock. Kyle had taken it home, got the inside of the holster good and wet. He took his Glock 19, wrapped it in a plastic bag as they suggest, and then put it inside the holster and left it for 24 hours. Removed the Glock and kind of played with it in and out to see if it would work. It was still a little stiff, a little tight. So he opted to, as they suggest, reapply the solution, keeping the Glock in plastic, putting it back in and leaving it for another 24 hours. After that, no problems. The Glock 19 goes in and out just fine. And like I said, Kyle had brought it in and was like, here, try it. Granted, I had that splint on, but I decided I was gonna carry my Glock 19 and try this leather holster out. So putting it in a three o'clock position, for me, what I'm used to really didn't work so well with this leather holster. So I decided to carry it at a four o'clock position, which isn't that bad though. I prefer to do the three o'clock just because it's a four o'clock position. Getting in and out of my car, the way the seats are shaped, uh, I tend to get poked by the grip and the magazine, but I dealt with it. Adapt and overcome, right? One thing I'd noticed right off the bat, when using any of these Kydex holsters, throughout the day I might have to shift and adjust the holster and I was able to just kind of grab the holster and I'm able to slide it forward or back, especially if it's a three o'clock position and I'm trying to get it in my pocket for something, I can lift and slide the holster out of the way. This one, however, being in the four o'clock position, once I get my belt on tight and everything, and I put the firearm in here, forget it, I wasn't moving this at all. I could not slide it forward or back. It was locked into place, which was actually kind of nice because it didn't shift out of place as some of the Kydex ones do, and then I have to adjust them back into a more comfortable position. After a little while, as the day pressed on, with this in the four o'clock position, I was aware that it was there, but at the same time, it was very comfortable. Uh, it definitely is contoured just the right way to definitely give you a good, tight fit up against the body. So if you're going for that real nice concealed approach, having a, a leather holster like this is gonna keep it really close to the body versus a Kydex holster where it's really sticking out, such as that. You can see this one is much flatter versus this that's gonna be sticking out. Would I continue to use the leather holster? By all means. It's one of those things I'm not really used to, I do like Kydex and I, mean, I really like it, but there's something nice about leather. Uh, it's very organic, uh, very old school. And look, let's face it, if I'm dressing up in somewhat nice clothes because Suzanne and I are going out to dinner on date night, um, what's gonna look a little better? This or this? A nice button down shirt, some slacks. Of course, this is gonna look better. Now this is out of the waistband, but they do make in the waistband. So if you're wearing a suit, four o'clock position, and in the waistband, leather is gonna look a lot better than a chunky piece of Kydex. Again, though, it's personal preference. So I wanna take an opportunity to kind of go over the craftsmanship of this leather holster. Now, some of the leather holsters that I've seen on the market have single stitching, right? So it's just one line of stitching all the way around. These are double stitched for reinforcement. All the way around, both sides, really hold together. It's finished on this side and it's a finished face on this side. The entire, it's single layer and the inside is the unfinished face. So when you first get it, it yes, it's gonna be a little rough and that softening solution that they give you really does help smooth it out. If you're worried about it scratching the finish, that solution will take care of that. The roughness on the inside helps retain and hold onto the firearm. You just push it down, it gets nice and snug, but again, it's in there. It is not coming out whatsoever. There is no give to it. The leather holster from, I wanna make sure I get their name right, from Craft Holsters is worth it. 
And no, they did not pay us to talk about the holster. All they did was send a holster for Kyle and myself to kind of try out and get a feel for and play with. So I figured I'd make a video and uh, let you guys know. I'll put a link to their company in the description below. Uh, it'll be below, of course, our t-shirts, which are gonna be at the very top. So what you should do is, before you go and order this nice leather holster, is click on the link to order a Blue Trail Range t-shirt, because you're never out of the fight. I almost forgot, on a side note, we had received two more holsters from a different company to review, and they are specifically for the Glock 19. One is out of the waistband, and one is in the waistband. And I am currently working on the out of the waistband one, which is like a Serpa holster, which that review will be coming up here shortly. Now that I can really manipulate the uh, handgun again, I'm gonna get some uh, rounds down range and, and work on drawing from the holster and all that good stuff. Uh, just, I have to be careful since there is a gap between the bones because it is still broken. Um, one side is healed, the other side there's, it's weird, there's a gap. So, all right, as always, I will see you on the trail. Stay safe in the fray, my friends.